Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and thank you for joining me for this image critique of one light setups. Now, one light, a lot of people ask me, how many lights do I need to create a beautiful image? And the thing is, some of my favorite photographs and some of my favorite photographers use one single light to craft beautiful, elegant images. So how many lights do you need? It may only be one. So that's why I've chosen one light as a topic for this week's critique. And by the way, if you are new to studio lighting and you'd like to understand it better and you'd like to grow, be sure to check out my course, Master Studio Lighting. It is the most in-depth course on studio lighting out there. There's more than 15 hours. Uh, it is something that I spent a lot of my heart and soul making for you guys. So with all that being said, let's jump in and take a look at your one light images. So this is a nice one light fashion look. Uh, the light is very soft, it's flattering on the face, and you can actually see that it's probably a large umbrella with diffusion. I can actually see that in the reflection of her glasses, but also I can tell in the soft light. Now as I look at this shot, there are a couple of things that I think could be improved. Um, you know, one of the things I think when I look at a photo is, does the color add anything? And in this particular shot, I don't think it does. I don't think this the color tells your story better. So personally, one way that I would improve this shot would be to make the image black and white. But when I do that, if you take a look at your histogram, and also beforehand as well, but uh, when you look at your histogram, I don't really have a true white point. You're missing your highlights. And you can see, you know, there's no true highlight in the skin or the background. And then actually you don't even have a true black point. So this tells me that you need to add contrast. And there are a million ways to do this, curves, levels. Um, so I went in and I just added a really strong curve. Now, of course, if this is too strong, you can always back off the opacity or go in and adjust it. But I think, I think it improves the photograph and makes it a little bit moodier. It feels a little bit more high fashion. Now, uh, another thing that I'm sure, I mean, clearly it's not on purpose, uh, but another thing that I found a little bit distracting were the wrinkles in the background. Now, uh, depending on how you store backgrounds and depending on where you live, sometimes the humidity messes it up. Um, so maybe using a wider aperture with the subject a little bit further off the background would actually put it out of focus and it would become less noticeable. Um, now, because you are using a large soft light source in the top left-hand corner, it is close to this side of her face, which is fine, but it's also closer to the background. So you notice how the background is actually quite light in the top left-hand corner? For me, that becomes a little bit of a distraction. So one of the things you could do is feather the light, which means just change the angle a little bit. I would feather it towards the subject so it goes a little bit darker in the corner and it brings more attention therefore onto the subject's face. I do think that that would give you a little bit more successful results. Next up, as I look at the quality of light on the subject, it's relatively soft, relatively flattering, but I think the directionality could be improved a little bit. Notice the shadow right here underneath her eye, kind of in the corner here. What this tells me is that the light is a little bit too far around to the right, or it could also be a teeny bit too high because it could create a shadow from both the side of her eye as well as a shadow downward. So I think you would benefit from lowering the light and bringing it around front just a little bit more. It would brighten up her eyes, give her a little bit more life. Now, as you are using one light, um, you don't use a second light, obviously, uh, to control the shadows. But I noticed when I looked in this file that you actually had some a little bit dark area here that I think you had tried to bring up in post. I saw a little bit of artifacting. If you don't want that shadow to be dark, uh, so dark, I would simply bring in a white reflector from the left-hand side. It would open up the shadows, make them a little bit brighter if you wanted them to be. That would be one way to control it when using a single light source. By the way, I did want to compliment you on your nice color theory here. You've got a little bit of a red, green or red teal. And because red is a dominant color, it's such a strong color, it pops forward and it makes her pop off the background. So I think you achieve really nice separation. Like look at the separation here. Um, you know, that could have easily fallen to shadow and she could have blended into the background. So you have really nice control of the background light. All right, next up. You may know that I am biased with the color red because it is my favorite color and it's such a strong color. So instantly when this photo comes up, it just jumps off the page. And so 
it's got a lot going for it. It's got the color theory. Uh, I also love the way that that makeup mimics the headscarf. It's gorgeous. I also think your light is beautiful. For a single light from above, a soft light source, it gives directionality, it gives shape. Look at these beautiful cheekbones. That's caused by lighting from above. It's dimension. All of that works for it. My critique would be of a couple of things. Uh, first of all, your eye goes to the brightest part of the frame. So I look at her headpiece and her face, which is great. I should look there first. But then I look at this box and my eye gets drawn here over and over again. So a suggestion, something that I do sometimes is if I have extra background paper, I'll actually wrap the box in that paper so that it matches the scene. And so it becomes a little bit more of an, a monochromatic scene. I think that would help. Um, personally, I am not the biggest fan of the crotch towards camera pose um it just it gives a lot of tension down here and I, I don't think it's necessary I think you could still have achieved a graphic pose without necessarily uh, choosing this one listen people do it in fashion magazines it's not technically wrong it's just not my favorite uh, and then I'd also make sure you photoshop to clean up the floor a little bit I see some of the dirt there um, so what you actually are working with that light and the styling and the makeup that's beautiful I just little tweaks to make the shot even better now I wanted to include this photograph because the light is perfect and the processing is fantastic like it's exactly lit how it should be it's processed how it should be I love the black and white uh, but I, I would do it again to make it like killer uh, ideally you find a dancer or someone who does yoga that can go both up on their toe and come in a little bit closer and then be on their uh, like on their fingertips or wrapping around uh, because ideally the flat foot it it like truncates this it looks wide it doesn't quite have the flow so ideally the subject would be on their tippy toes and it would look amazing but I would also find a subject who's fine with going with no underwear uh, because it's it is a distraction and there, there, are, there are plenty of fine art nude models out there I'm writing my next book on fine art nudes uh, and then I would also tilt her head just a little bit in so that you could actually see her profile a little bit more cleanly I love what's going on here and so I want to see it be even more amazing this is a super cool use of a single light one light from behind using I don't know smoke or incense or something like that and I think you do a really nice job of having it just kiss the outline of the subject now I, I definitely applaud you for uh, having the subject be in profile and having them strike a pose where you can see a little bit of shape if the subject's head was turned too much towards camera they you wouldn't be able to see their face at all if they're facing their whole body towards camera it wouldn't necessarily be interesting um, I would encourage you to try the same lighting again since you clearly know how it's done uh, but go with even more graphic poses you know maybe you pick an athlete and they're running and then you can see their form more clearly right now because he's wearing like a, a dress shirt you can't really see the outlines of the body quite as cleanly it's a little bit messy uh, and so I think you could make the shot even more interesting by changing the subject matter also if you have control over this the smoke I'd put a little bit more towards the bottom of the frame or, or basically wherever you'd see a hand so it doesn't just fall to darkness you could fill up the frame just a little bit more super interesting immediately grabs my attention shooting on location can be a challenge because you, you're dealing with so many things I, mean, I can tell for example I would look at the scene and go oh, man this is gonna be tough and the reason being is look at the uh, purple over here on the left hand side well I can see it on her face a little bit it's not bad I just I know man you're fighting with all these color temperatures how can you make her skin tone look correct etc so uh, you did a, a nice job of making her uh, have the correct color and pop out from the scene that being said uh, as I zoomed in and I was looking at a couple of things first of all I was trying to see what your light source was and as I zoom in it's irregular so this makes me think that perhaps you had a strobe or speed light uh, bouncing off the wall behind you so what this does is if it's bouncing off of something behind you it becomes a flatter light source it doesn't really have any directionality but for this subject the problem is is it's flat and it's kind of reflecting off of her cheeks again because it's angle of incidence equals angle of reflection so basically what it means is light comes in bounces straight back towards camera 
and it's making her look a little greasy. Uh, it's it's not the most flattering light. It's also not soft uh, because it, if it's so far away, you had to bounce the light, you had to travel quite far. And so I think in a perfect situation, you would actually have the light. If you, if you had the time, you'd have a big soft light source a little bit closer with a little bit of directionality. Now I know if this is an event and you're in and out, you maybe don't have the time to set that up. So I get that. And I think you did a good job, especially if you're on a, on a time crunch. Um, I also think probably the shot was underexposed. You have a lot of color artifacting. Um, I see it on the face, particularly here on the chest. Uh, so just be trying to get as much as possible in camera. I'm not sure if you shot raw, but if you didn't shoot raw, it would it would definitely be helpful to do that. So this is a weird, funky, cool, unexpected image. And what I liked about this for a single light source is that it, it looks like multiple and you really create drama. So your main light is way, way above the subject. And that's why there's the darkness in the eyes. But I like it. It fits here because it, it looks like uh, it's a mix of bondage man and the iron mask, steampunk. It's like it's all of those things together. So having a light so high not only gives you the shadows in the eyes, but it also really carves out all the detail in these gems and the cogs and whatnot. And then see this highlight on the chin here. There is a second light, but it's not a light. It's actually a silver reflector uh, filling in, bouncing the light from below. And so it makes sure this doesn't just all fall to shadow. So I thought that was really cool. Um, as I looked at this, I think the pose could be improved perhaps. Um, right now, I feel like I get drawn into the shoulders a bit. So maybe changing the angle of the body or trying to pull the shoulders in or something like that could be an improvement. And I do notice, I mean, obviously this is a wig. I do notice some of the messy edges. I, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't overly bother me, but I think a little bit cleaner would have fit better with the very mechanical look you have here. Almost like she is a cyborg. So if you could get those clean lines, I think it would uh, emphasize the story you're trying to tell even more. But that lighting is super interesting and very well done, especially with a single light source. Thanks again, everyone, for joining me. I hope that you found something useful, something educational in these critiques. Remember, critiques are a very important way to learn and to grow. If you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.